As planned, we woke up at 2.30 a.m. to catch the 3 a.m. express bus back to Belize City. The express bus would take two and a half hours, putting us where we needed to be at 6 a.m. to catch our 11 o'clock flight. If we waited for the 5 a.m. non-express bus, the ride would take five hours, and we didn't want to push it so close. I had plenty of snacks from the Chinese store in case anyone got hungry, and we left Dude in a pull-up, knowing once again we wouldn't have any bathroom breaks. With sleepy faces and rabbed hair, we waited patiently for our pimped out school bus, but we weren't the only ones out there. Also waiting with us was a bus station employee, a nodding lady, and a man who had just woken up from a drunken stupor. The bus station employee explained to us that the talkative, still intoxicated man was the town's beloved former school teacher. After retiring, he started drinking heavily, but was still respected and loved by many. This former teacher happily told us stories about his past as a teacher and shared lessons he learned about life. Being multilingual really caught Zane's attention. The school teacher was able to share his lessons in English, Spanish, Creole, and in the Mayan language. When the bus finally arrived, it was packed. Luckily, there were empty seats in the front right behind the driver. Now, I know the video footage I have is dark and grainy, the audio is noisy and rickety, but this is exactly how the bus ride was. We were riding in pitch blackness and we could only see a short distance in front of the bus's windshield. The bus was loud and rattling. The rain was steady and the roads were slippery mud paths. It was a gripping ride. More and more people got on the bus and it seemed to be standing room only in the back. I think I held my breath for the first hour, then out of plain exhaustion, I decided the smartest thing would be to go to sleep and not hang on the bus's every slip and sigh. Eventually, the bus made a stop. Some passengers got off, some more passengers got on, and I went back to sleep. By the time I woke up, the sun was rising and we were minutes away from the bus terminal in Belize City. We thanked the driver and his staff for such excellent work under hard conditions and caught a taxi to the airport. We seemed to be the first to arrive, but when you travel, it's always to be very early than to even be a little late. Okay, so we made it to the airport from San Ignacio. The bus ride. The bus ride. Please join us in a description of this bus ride. I want you to imagine the same school bus that you rode in elementary school, circa 1985 or above. That same exact one. Painted purple with lightning bolts and other fancy stuff on the side. Hurling through slippery, dark, jungle at the speed of sound. Rickety rackety sound though. It was an experience. We made it. The driver was excellent because the roads were just it's like the moon. Let's just say it was like the moon. Pretty bumpy. Even after our moon-cratered filled bumpy bus ride, Dude was able to sleep soundly and unmoved throughout the whole experience. Oh, what I would give to be able to sleep so deeply. After waiting for a couple more hours, we decided to eat breakfast at the airport's restaurant. Despite us having bad weather during our visit, it really was a great quick four-day family getaway. Minus airfare, we spent less than $300. Belize is definitely some place we want to go to again. I already have our next trip mapped out in my mind. This time, we'll start off on the Caribbean coast at Hopkins or Placencia for a couple days, hopefully also learning more about the Garifuna culture and language. Then we'll head back towards San Ignacio with a quick stop at the zoo. Once in San Ignacio, we'll go to the Shunantunich ruins that we didn't see this go round and hopefully get in some cave tubing. Even though we will have many more adventures before we return here, we were definitely enchanted by this country and look forward to returning. ¿Quién estaba haciendo esto? ¿Quién? ¿Quién? Oh. Ok, yo no quiero hacer. While we waited for immigration agents to get on their posts, the boys sat down and told brotherly secrets and jokes to one another. Slowly but surely, other passengers started arriving. 
Finally, at the departure gate, we met other passengers returning to the U.S. One was a very lively retiree who'd been living in Belize for a decade. She had great insight on the culture and history and was generous in sharing the Belizean Creole Bible with us. Fully written in Caribbean dialect, it was a great symbol of how proud Belize is of its unique culture and mixes of people. Here's a free hint when reading it. Read out loud with a Caribbean accent. The flight back was pleasant. We met other passengers from all over the U.S. Some were there for teacher training, others for vacation, others visiting friends. We were all dreading returning to our very cold winter at home. As always, the flight home serves as a great time to reflect on our journey. We all agree that we are very thankful for you, our followers, who allow us to share our journeys and travel tips with you. You, my dear, are truly unbelievable.